Today on a haunting episode of Real Ghost Stories Online that was the inspiration of the never-released episode of the hit comedy series Full House, where Joey decided to practice black magic in the basement of Danny Tanner's home, releasing demons that turned DJ and Stephanie into sex slaves to the Illuminati and putting Uncle Jesse and Danny that much closer to world domination. What was pulling a young woman off her bed as she simply tried to find some restful sleep night after night? That story and much more today on Real Ghost Stories Online. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is. And uh, yes, if you'd like to uh, get access to our bonus episodes, advanced episodes, uh, the full archive and everything commercial free, check out uh, our Apple podcast page now. You can uh, go there and uh, try it free for three days. Get all those extras. Uh, or go to patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghostpodcast.com. Bonus episodes, advanced episodes, the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories, all ad-free. Check it out and help keep the program on the air. It is Tony and Carol Hughes with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? Hey, Tony. So, um, I kind of mentioned this to you a minute ago, mm-hmm. off, when we before we started yeah. recording. But, so, I think everyone's fully aware that I lost my dog mm-hmm. and... That's been th- right at, at three months. Okay. And um, so I was like, <clears throat> I just know sometime he's going to show up in a dream or something and nothing, like nothing. I remember one night you told me, yeah, if there's ever going to be a dog show back up and and haunt, like be a ghost dog, it would be your dog. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, but, but I also know he wouldn't do that because he also knows I don't like to be scared. Scared, mm-hmm. so that doesn't surprise me. And he was kind of a, in many ways, a very timid dog. Mm-hmm. But um, not with me, but with the world. And so finally, the other night, I had a dream with him in it, and it was really weird. And it was the next day, I was like, I woke up and I came in out of my room into the front room, and I was like, wait, I didn't see Buddy last night. Like it was that kind of real, mm-hmm. and all it was. It was really, really short, and it happened twice. And the dreams were so short. It was like they were a TikTok video, like a really short one, like an eight-second one. But one of them, I in my in this dream, and this is all I remember. It's not like there's a before to this part of dream or after, just this part. Right. And it was, I was in the bathroom, and my cat always hangs out in the bathroom with me when I get ready, so he was in there. And... I look over, I see something out of the corner of my eye, look over and Buddy comes walking up. It was a younger Buddy. He wasn't quite so white. Mm -hmm. And he just looks at me. And it wasn't like, it was kind of more like, I'm here. And it wasn't like, here I am, like dogs Mm -hmm. are. It was more like, and I go, Buddy, like, what are you, you're not, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. And he's just looking at me. And then I woke up right then. I was like, the hell was that? Like, it was weird. Like, I just saw Buddy. So then I fall back to sleep later in my dream. The exact same thing. Like, this quick, there's no before part of this dream, no after part of the dream. It's just, I'm in my bed, and I heard something. I turned the light on. It was Buddy looking at me. And I was like, what are you doing here? How did you get here? And he was kind of a little bit happier. Mm-hmm. that time but it was the weirdest thing and then I woke up again and I was like okay and then that was weird because I'm in my bed in my room mm-hmm. and I'm like oh my god turn my light on but he wasn't there <laughs> but it was just it was as we've talked about those kind of dreams before that are different mm-hmm. a visitation dream yeah. that just feels like you just saw him Mm-hmm. And like you just had an interaction, yeah. And that's totally what those were. And but they were the weirdest dreams. It wasn't like this long, complicated dream. It was just like short, like a little video you'd see on Instagram. Sure. And it was just this quick little video, is what it felt like looking back on it. Yeah. And both times, I was like, 
How did you get here? You know what's what gonna are you doing here? what's gonna happen next is you're gonna get visions of Buddy at the murder she shed, and he's gonna be solving a crime. He's gonna <laughs> he's on the other side going to tell you what happened. You're gonna be in snippets for like one day he's like trying to like nudge and you got it's like you gotta put the puzzle together of what he's trying to tell you, and you're gonna end up discovering like a mass grave under there. Oh, that's all I need in my backyard. A mass, a mass grave. grave. But wouldn't it be cool no. if Buddy did that? Like, from the other side, he was, like, literally, he could, like, give you, like, interesting signs like that? No, I, there's a lot of thing, cool <laughs> things that could happen from the other side, but that is one of them. <laughs> like, solving a crime that I don't yes. think happened, and then it'd be like, shit. Then you're like, you suddenly, know, Buddy, and then Buddy, like, where are we going next, Buddy? And he, like, goes to a map, and he just, he points at where you need to go. And then you get the visions when you're there from the spirit of Buddy. And we haven't talked about my murder she shed for a while. Yeah. But for someone who doesn't know, I moved into this house and I have two sheds next to each other. And one's a nice metal shed. They, It's like, hey, I'm on a half acre, so I have quite a bit of yard back there. Mm -hmm. It's got electricity back there, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. But then the shed next to it was built when the house was built in 1940 and it's creepy AF. Mm -hmm. it's a, but I don't feel like it's bad creepy, but I definitely feel like somebody's watching me from inside the shed. Definitely. Demonic. But don't do that. <laughs> and don't do what? So I did... Um, I, I posted a couple of pictures on our Real Ghost Story group page. Beelzebub. Stop it, you asshole. I'm going to quit telling stories. I'm going to just... Get I I'm not doing right anything. <laughs> Could you just be like... You're like, telling the story that, of the shed that doesn't feel like there's anything negative there. So, okay. And end of story. I'm done. I'm done. You can see some <laughs> no. pictures of the Real Ghost Stories group page. I just posted him. Steal your soul. Stop it. Stop it. I don't like that voice right at this moment. The crutches are mine. <laughs> and I have a pair of crutches in the in the murder she shed. That Help, are I can't walk. Up. I need my crutches. I need my crutches. Hey, I really have my crutches. I, you know, I was like, I think maybe a creepier thing would be to find like a coffin but what would the second creepier thing be? Crutches, maybe? And they're all wrapped up in black plastic and they're with zip ties around them. Yeah. And they're just crutches. Well, what, they're still back there. So I took a picture yeah. of the crutches back there, too. So that's on the page. What you're going to end up finding is there'll be a coffin underneath the she shed. And when you open the coffin, all it is is more crutches. Oh, my God. Now, that would be weird. Buried in there. Yeah. It'd be very... Uh, and, then, and then there's another coffin that opens. And it's a bunch of um, prosthetic legs. But here, here's the, the, the fun part. They're made with human skin. So they're very... Oh, that's so fun. They're, they're Ed Gein <laughs> style prosthetic legs. And, that is such uh, a fun part. You're right. Yep. So... So that's what's to come <laughs> at the murder she shed <sighs> can't wait for season Please. two yeah. i know it's exciting never a dull moment here <laughs> uh 855-853-4802 is our phone number at real ghost stories online let's go to our first uh story of the day it says i have many stories paranormal ghostly spiritual since i was a child at eight this one is not ghost related, but something else. My mother tried not to mention her scary true stories as I got older. Obviously, I became interested after my own experiences. My mom was spiritual, raised Christian, and my father, as I learned, was cursed. My father never looked at cemeteries whenever we passed by one. I remember asking young and my mom said, he sees the ghosts. Currently in 2022, I have one older sister at 31, myself in 30. My younger brother is 24. My younger sister died at 20. Both parents are dead. Dad died in 2016 and my mother in 2021. My story is recent in 2020. 
left a very haunted apartment. It's caused so much demise. I never want to be there at all. I call it 1518. My whole family separated. We all went our own ways after downsizing from a house. I got an apartment with my boyfriend of three years who lived with my family and met me when my last in-between place was haunted so he knew the stories. I've always been perceptive to other feelings and intense energy. I also saw many spirits. I heard them speak to me and dreamt strange dreams very, very clearly. My new place, I thought I got away from it because I blessed it myself and asked no spirits to follow. They're not allowed in. It was a few months in that I was sleepy from work, got home around 11 p.m., went to bed. Boyfriend gets home around midnight or just a bit earlier. My bedroom doors are always closed. I have three doors, living room door, closet door, and bathroom door. I have blackout curtains because I hate the lights. My boyfriend always comes home and turns the TV on to play video games and chats online. We recently lost our incredibly young dog, so I did not have anyone to sleep with me as usual. And we're falling into a hazy, awake, sleepy state. Then I'm out, but wide awake again. It's pitch black, and I feel the covers, blankets that I'm under getting pulled off. Close my eyes, and instead of the blankets getting pulled off, it's my ankles getting gently pulled off the edge of the bed while my body went underneath the blankets. I was frozen. Ankles still being pulled off towards the edge of the bed where my feet hit the floor and I just closed my eyes and slunk off the bed where my feet were at the ground and I curled up, eyes closed still. I'm on the floor. It took me 30 seconds to open my eyes. When I got up the courage to open my eyes, pitch blackout, then I saw a cyan blue blinking light. Went on for two seconds, then off for two seconds. This continues like repeat. The room was hazy, whitish blue, like fog was there. I heard my boyfriend from the other room talking and his game playing. I wanted to open the door, but I got a bad feeling. I started screaming for him, begging, and I tried to knock on the door, and he stopped at a moment, then went back to playing his game. I did not want to open any doors, fearing I might walk into a place and never be back. I searched for the light blue flashing light. I just saw exactly where it was coming from, but nothing was there to make it appear. Just my cardboard boxes I used as a TV stand with a blanket on top. No reason there'd be light unless I opened a door. I did not even own a lamp. Slowly I look around and check if my boyfriend's awake. Yes, he is. I decide he, I should go back to sleep. Crawl into my bed scared. Immediately I wake up. The room is dark, no light. Blankets are still on top of me. I get up, hesitation to open the living room door. I open it when I hear my boyfriend. I walk out and everything is fine. I asked if he heard me and he said no. I remember telling him I heard what he was saying. I don't know what now. It has been so long, but it was weirdest, but was weirded out by what I knew. Go back, turn my lights on in my bathroom to look for what caused the blue light. Weird thing was, when I looked at where the blue light was coming from in my dream... I saw my purple Halloween strobe light sitting exactly where I placed it the night before, but off. I checked the batteries. It was fine. I checked the motion sensor. It, too, was off. I tried to replicate this again. I have not been able to be back to that place that I saw in my dream. Was this that astral place people talk about? I don't know. I never saw my body, but I knew where it was without seeing it when I lay down. Thoughts on it being that astral place? I, I I don't totally understand. Well, like I really understand what ghosts are, but like that astral thing, I don't totally get that concept. But I do think that you could be sleeping and you could be up moving around and not and think that you're sleeping. Mm-hmm. You could be sleepwalking. Yeah. And you don't realize you're walking. Yeah. And moving around. And I've never done that in my life. Like, I don't think I've ever gotten up and not known it. Mm -hmm. I'm probably the world's lightest sleeper. So that might explain it. Yeah. But 
you know, so to me, I think that there are ways that you could have heard things of him um, talking and what he was saying, but not the astral projection part. I don't know. I don't know. Have you ever had um, it when you're you're laying there sleeping there that you almost feel like you're above yourself? No. Or like you're just kind I, of out of your I body? Think I've, I think that I've had dreams where I've seen myself, but I haven't like, but it's always been a dream. You ever have dreams where you're sitting there and suddenly you're in a pool of dolphins? And they're all smoking cigars. They're wearing those. I've had dreams where I've been in a pool, but not with dolphins smoking cigars. You're in the dream where you're (laughs) in a pool in the shape of a clown head. Oh, yeah. Gloria Estefan and the Miami Sound Machine are playing conga. Oh, yeah, I had that dream. And it starts raining blood. And then you say, ole, and then you wake up. I, you know, no, one of those my dreams dream that conga that conga song started. Oh, what? Oh, I'm thinking. Uh, oh yeah. Con- oh, 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 hey, oh, that is rhythm is going to get you. Well, Gloria Estefan trivia here. You're only going to find it on Real Ghost Stories online, everybody. Um, but what now, do you think about the whole astral projection? What's your thoughts on I it? I think it can be done. I think there's there's ways that people have done it, are doing it, aren't realizing they're doing it. I don't know. I've, I've had a few experiences not on anything at all, just... Uh, wink, wink. No, seriously, like stone cold sober, no alcohol, no weed, nothing. And I, I'm just, I felt like I was kind of, I, I mean, I, when I say high, I don't mean high, like, like marijuana high. I mean more like in the sky, like I was lifted, like I was elevated. Um, there's, and I've had it where I, I almost feel like I can look around and. Interesting. And see the the space. I, I I have never like looked down and saw myself or anything like that. Like a lot of people claim that they do, but I could almost just kind of I don't know. It, it was like I could see the room, but I couldn't. It was almost I I guess kind of what uh, some forms of blindness might be like, where you can kind of see forms and shadows and things like that. But it was clear enough to to know where I was. But I don't know. It's weird. It, it's a weird. I've only had that experience a few times. And who knows? It might have just been, you know, borderline sleep paralysis or something. Did you ever well, have? And even Go ahead. that light that she or he was saying, um, that Santa blue light. Yeah. Like that has happened to me before. Yeah. I woke up because I thought I heard something. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, oh, my God, there's this weird light flashing. And then I realized it was police outside my house. Yeah. And so maybe that could be, I don't know. But I don't know. But that was really weird because it it almost like one time it happened and because somebody like there was a like I was awake though, because somebody like stopped out in front of my house and just stopped their car and just shot a gun like thirteen or fourteen. Oh god. I gosh. have no idea why. Yeah. Scared the shit out of me. I hit the ground. I grabbed my dog. Like I'm on the ground. Yeah. With him. And and then I heard the cars um, take off. But then like cops just invaded. And it was weird because I'm in my room. It almost looked like a circus was going on. <laughs> <laughs> so many I was like, this is bizarre. And I eventually just went outside when I saw them. With a flashlight looking at my car. Oh, God. I'm like, okay, that's it. Yeah. So I go outside. I go, do you know what that was all about? He goes, what'd you hear? And I go, the guy was at the four-way stop by my house because we lived on the corner. And yeah. I heard all the gunshots, and then I heard him squeal off. I didn't see another car. Yeah. I didn't, you know, I was sound asleep. 
And why are you looking at my car like that? He goes, uh, because it might have been shot at. Oh. <laughs> like, oh my God, do you think my car has a bullet hole in it? And he's like, I don't know. That's what we're looking for. Then he goes around the house looking for bullets in my house. Like, I was like, oh, this is like a weird, am I, am I awake? But I was. Yeah. But my roommate at the time slept through the whole thing. <laughs> Next day, I was like, what the F with all that? Yeah. And he's like, what are you talking about? I said, last night. When the gunshots, what gunshots? Oh, my like God. Seen of them right outside my bedroom. <laughs> like, you didn't hear any of it? No, I didn't hear any of it. Maybe he Maybe was the gunman. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Snuck back in the room. In the yeah. house. Exactly. So I don't know. There's some things, you know, like, I don't know. That's that's kind of a tough one because there's a few things that maybe it could have been. Mm -hmm. But then, I don't know. No. Yeah. It's a creepy one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go to a uh, phone call. 855-853-4802. The phone number to call, by the way, 24-7 to share your real ghost stories with us. We'd love to hear them. Yes. Hi, my name's Stephanie. Uh, I've been meaning to call to your show for two, three years now. Um, it's something that I only share with a couple of close people in my life. And this is something that happened when I was nine years old. So it might be a little bit long of a story, but I'll try to be as short as I can. Um, so in 1999, I lost. My uncle, he was the only son of my grandma, my grandma from my mom's side. Um, he disappeared. They found his car with all of his belongings. And story short, we believe he drowned, but his body never emerged. Um, I remember seeing my grandma cry, and I think it's the biggest suffering I've seen her go through. And it was very shocking because my grandma is a very strong person. And when I mean strong, not only physically, but emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. And I remember that summer that my aunt, my mom's sister, she came from the States because I was raised in Puerto Rico um, with my grandma. And she came from the States to help her take care both of me and my brother. So what she did was that she took my brother with me, but with her. She took my brother with her, and I stayed with my grandma. And I remember that summer of 1999, um, I would always kind of sleep in as a kid, and my grandma was always a morning person. She's always been a morning person. And the routine was that I will usually wake up, and she will be out in the garden, just working with her plants, watering them, or either cleaning around the house. And it was a week that it was very particular that I will wake up and it was almost like it was I was in a zombie state um, another detail that I want to give before I continue with my story is that um, my brother's room is where my uncle who disappeared stayed for a couple of days or weeks because he had separated from his former wife and he was depressed. He mixed his medications with alcohol, and that's another factor that um, we took into account of what, why he probably drowned. Um, so in that room, there were personal belongings of my uncle in the closet, um, and it was the same bedroom that was empty during the summer because my brother had moved with my on to the state temporarily while my grandma was trying to figure everything out and grieving all the recent um, process. So that week, I will wake up and I will walk straight into my brother's room. His room was has kind of like an odd entrance. Um, so it's almost like there's um, a small hallway and then you will go into his bedroom and I remember going straight into his bedroom turning around and facing the door 
and I could sense as I was calling my grandma, I started calling my grandma and right away I could sense something emerging from my brother's um, closet standing right behind me and the, mo- the, mo- the weirdest detail is that that thing that I couldn't really process if it was a he or she it was like almost like a non-binary I couldn't really make sense of the sex of that entity it did have like short hair like my grandma it had um, probably clothes similar to my grandma and as soon as I start to call my grandma it will just quickly come out of the closet and start running. When I say running, it will sprint at a very, very fast um, speed and it will go straight to me. It will aim to touch me and as soon as I will like look back to see if it was, if, to see who it was, it will completely disappear. So that happened one day and it happened twice. And the third day that it happened in a row, it was almost like I snapped out of it and I realized what was going on. And I got so and so scared that I just ran, ran. When I say I ran, I ran out of my brother's bedroom. And I remember sprinting over to my grandma and she was outside. She was watering her plants and telling her. Obviously, my grandma... She was in another mental state of, you know, distracted, extremely sad because she was processing my uh, uncle's passing. Um, And she probably took it as, oh, you know, you're a kid. You're probably (laughs) imagining things. Um, But I'm very clear of what I experienced and how scared I felt. I remember my brother always feeling scared of sleeping in his in his room um and I remember as a kid like feeling kind of like a dense energy from that bedroom um I can't really tell why it happened I still to this day I question myself what will have happened if I had let that entity touch me um I am definitely sure that it was not uh, good energy because of how scared I was. I was petrified. Um, I can say that I'm glad that I didn't let it touch me. I definitely feel like I was protected. Um, and I still feel like I'm protected. Uh, another um, detail from that summer is that as soon as I turned nine, it was probably... A month or two after my uncle's disappearance, um, I started developing my sixth sense. I will dream things and they will happen. I will dream about people that I've never met before and I will be telling my grandma and I will look to the sign. I will see the person that I had seen in my dreams. Um, And even to this day, I mainly dream about things and I know I can identify when a dream is trying to give me a message because I will keep that dream um, in my mind and then something will happen maybe a week or two later, two weeks later, a couple days later, I'll be like, ah, this is what I dream about. So this is what it's related about. Um, I can definitely feel energy Um, I can sense and I'm very sensitive to energy and people. And it's something that developed that same summer that my uncle disappeared. Uh, So, yes. So I just wanted to share and hopefully this makes it to the podcast. Um, And love to hear your input on this experience as well. Um, Thank you for the space and take care. I think it's something in a family where uh, sometimes these intuitions or these senses will kick in when there is something that tragic that goes on, like suddenly the uncle goes missing. Is that 
you know, it's part of the ecosystem of the DNA uh, within us. It's like, you know, well, we, you have to be hyper alert now. Someone's missing from the tribe or something like that. Well, and if that's the room that the uncle stayed in too, yeah, like was there something there that he'd experienced? I don't know. I don't know. Or, um, you know, it, it's really hard to tell because after going through something like that would be so emotionally traumatic on everyone in the family, and now he's missing, and. I just think that environment alone, I can't imagine. I've never lived through anything like that. Yeah. But that environment would make everything would be just so, even you might have the most loving grandmother ever, but if she's dealing with that, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. So is it just the energy of all this sadness around you too? And then maybe there really is something there. And then you experience that. It's like, I don't know. A lot of possibilities on how it's all working kind of in tandem. Yeah. But no, thank you for that, uh, that story. 855-853-4802, uh, our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. If you'd like to share your real ghost stories with us, we'd love you to 24-7. Call that and... Uh, you know, get in on that. That's going to wrap up today's episode of the program. If you like the show, keep us on the air. Become an extra podcast person. Sign up through Apple Podcasts. Even try three days free on our channel there or patreon.com slash real ghost stories or ghostpodcast.com. Get all the advanced episodes, the archive, and the bonus episodes, all commercial free, whatever platform you choose. Until next time, for Carol and all of us at Real Ghost Stories Online, I'm Tony Bruschi. Thank you for listening.